Hello. If you're hearing my voice right now, then you have stumbled onto the podcast where real stories of professional criminal profilers are told by professional assholes. Welcome to Profiling Pain. Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Profiling Pain. We have Chiron in the studio today. Yeah, yeah, yo! Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Chris Payne, your host. I'm Jaime in Fuego. I'm Mahalo. And I'm Matthew. So today, Woo. we're gonna be doing uh, George Metesky, the Mad Bomber. Uh, it's not a very widely known case, although it was a, a case that just lasted 16 years. It was, it was one of the highest profile cases in the early 1930s all the way to the 1950s. Sprawling, dude. Yeah, so... <laughs> And the whole premise of this show is I want to shine light on profilers. I, everybody hears about true crime. Everybody hears about conspiracy theories and everything else. But it never really boils down to the guy that truly solved the case. Now, today isn't going to be any different. We're not going to get to him yet. That's going to be the next episode. Now you're but, beating the audience. <laughs> but we're going to give you the outline of the case. So George Metesky, all right, a.k.a. the Mad Bomber. We're talking about somebody who left over 32 bombs throughout New York City at the, at the height of the... Uh, just before World War II, just after the Great Depression. So when that, I mean, the country itself, but also specifically that city, was in the most disarray. I mean, with the collapse of Wall Street, people doing the run on the banks and everything else, it was it was a very, very epic time. There Probably a, why he was able to get away with it for so long, I would say. Yeah, the ultimate distraction. So yeah, what I mean. you're saying is at this point in time, Gotham City existed. Mm. Kind of, <laughs> pretty much. It's funny you, you know, should say that. Gotham so, City okay. is modeled after... Uh, well, actually, no, I'm trying to remember because Metropolis is modeled after, oh boy, more so Chicago, maybe. I'm not sure because I, think I know Gotham was Chicago. Got- no, Gotham. That's what I thought, yeah. you know, because one is New York City and one is oh, Chicago. Oh, no, 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 no. Gotham was Even though they totally effed it up for Batman v Superman and had them right next to each other. There's yeah. supposed to be yeah. some distance, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really easy to run across that lake when you're playing the uh, DC Universe online. So, Wait, hold on. Isn't Metropolis that. like New York? The Mecca? Yeah, Metropolis yeah. is supposed to be New York. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Anyway, so, so moving we on. We digress. So <laughs> now that we've already gone complete nerd on the uh, on the comic book, that's who we are, though. That's exactly uh, kind of how this story starts. So Metesky's start is almost that of the ultimate, you know, comic book villain, especially in the early 1930s. Mm-hmm. So we're we're gonna go ahead and get into that, which so, is when all those comics were around that time. Exactly. Can we take a second anyway. to just like really? I don't want to say appreciate somebody's a fu- is you are appreciated, but, but realistically. Thirty-two bombs. This guy had he had to have one had a daytime job to afford the fact that he could have these bombs. Two, he had to save Not up. Not necessarily. Maybe, but he had to save up <laughs> money to get the, the the ingenuitive ones. They can the just amount get of the foreshadowing that you guys are already doing without <laughs> hearing the story. This is right, so, true. But so have I mean, any of you? Okay, so have anybody here besides my constant ranting on this? Has have any of you here ever even heard of this case? No, never. That's heard. this I've is new to me. I, I think maybe. I've okay, heard the so name. now now are you thinking of the Mad Bomber or are you thinking the Unabomber? No, I know the difference. The Unabomber. Yeah, because Ted 90s. Kaczynski, yeah. the, the Unabomber. The longest actually, time I thought the Unabomber was just anybody with the Unabomber. We always joke with Luis at work. That when, he come, <laughs> when he comes in with the hood on and his sunglasses, he looks Unabomber status. Right, so they say that the Not Uni- something to laugh about. The Unabomber but. was inspired by the Mad Bomber, stuff like that. But we're, 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 we're Seriously? Gonna they have a connection? Yeah. Um, I mean, okay. outside of bombs and outside of, I, I believe it, it even happened in New York. Well, uh, that's probably going to be I a further bombs. episode, you know, so hold on for that. Right. Bombs. All right. So, so act one. All right. So we're, this is the first episode, the first ever episode. This is something we're trying out. Centartainment, by the way. So this is what this is all going to be presented by. So, uh, and at the end, we're going to give you more, more information on, on the band and all kinds of things. So just hold tight. But so the antagonist, all right, George Metesky, the mad bomber. He terrorized New York City for 16 years, placing an admitted 32 bombs. Okay, so all this took place, like I said, between the 1940s and 50s for the most part. Right there, you know, following the Great Depression and leading into World War II at the height of what everybody claimed was the great America, the 1950s. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what well, most that people the, think about when they right. think back to it. Like, that's what yeah, America was either, at. The, yeah. It's at the cusp of... Uh, we won the war. Everything's okay. Yeah. The we world is great. Economy. Yeah. When yeah. I yeah. think of, of America at that time, I usually think of King Kong. You know, the, right. the, the, yeah, they could conquer anything. It was it was insane. There's always some form of like King giant Kong monster reference Kong. when Mahal's around. Kong. <laughs> Kong. All right, so <laughs> nothing. I mean, there's me. always some form of giant monster reference just play out. <laughs> yeah. So Metesky's backstory. This goes into the supervillain thing. All right, so first of all, uh, he was born George Peter Metesky on November second in nineteen oh three in Connecticut. Uh, so. Yeah. There's not really too much about his childhood on file. I mean, I'm sure if, if I decided to pay the, the fee to get into some FBI database, I could. But for just standard info, we're just going to cut straight to him being a young man. Uh, so Metesky was actually a Marine Specialist Electrician in World War One. 
He was uh, stationed at the U.S. consulate in Shanghai. Um, like I said, he was a Marine. He was serving his country. He's overseas. And so he came back. All right. And when he came back, you know, World War One ended. Uh, what was it? 1917 it ended. You know what I mean? So he had a few years to build up his rep. And he, he ended up getting a job with uh, the Consolidated Edison Utility Company. So kind of continuing his construction knowledge or continuing his electrical yeah, knowledge, you know. Um, so what he did was he worked for... He worked in the electrical field as a mechanic for the Consolidated Edison uh, Utility Company. He, uh, he was living in Waterbury, Connecticut with his two sisters, and all three of them were unmarried. There's no even source of anything saying he ever had a spouse, if there was a divorce, I mean, anything. So I can only imagine that the amount of jacking off in that house was just ridiculous. So he, had a guy, bro. <laughs> so he he went to war, came back, it's just two him and his two sisters, no children. But no, see, I mean, back then there was no jacking off because you were just you just didn't do it. You weren't supposed to. You weren't <laughs> supposed to. Everybody was Catholic at that point in time. I'm, you didn't spill the seed of life <laughs> onto the ground. You spilled it into the time. belly of a whore. Right. So 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 maybe that fueled like a lot of this repression as well. I'm thinking, he wasn't well we're, gonna, anyway. we're, we're gonna get into the shapes of the bombs later, and I think mm. that has a lot to do with uh oh, they very his phallus. Are they very phallic? All right, but so but did for they him, have testicles. <laughs> so for him, he was lucky enough to have a decent job as a generator wiper at Con Ed's Hellgate. Plant. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> How a much generator does the generator wiper? wiper make? <laughs> Is this somebody who just wipes down the generator? That's yeah. You, you I want I mean, this fucking job. He was also a mechanic. He, was also a mechanic. he did. He did, you know, like facility work. I will work part time as a fucking wiper. Are you kidding me? It makes me think of clerks where he's like, "How much does the average jizz mopper make?" And he's, oh, like, what's he's like, "What's a jizz mopper?" All right, <laughs> probably slightly more than the fluffer. Yeah. All right. So anyway, uh, slightly, he was a, still slightly. He was a generator wiper, right? All, uh, one night while he was working, there was a boiler backfire. Um, it released such a hot gas, and the explosion was so much that it actually blasted his ass to the ground. And then his lungs filled up with fumes, choking him. Toxic fumes. Now, if that's not the beginning of some form of like supervillain in the early 30s, 40s, 50s comics, I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, the so release he, of hot gas yeah, blasting hot your gas, ass. Inhale <laughs> toxic fumes, you know what I mean? He's so literally he, the Joker. A bit of radiation. Yeah, so he He's ended up, literally the Joker. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's Yeah, exactly. So he ended up in the hospital for, for, for quite a bit. Um, he ended up uh, being you know labeled as disabled. He ended up getting pneumonia, which ended up turning into tuberculosis. Whoa. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, you put that into perspective. This dude just got diagnosed with tuberculosis in the 30s, which wasn't a killer. Yeah. But it was a definite hindrance. And, and not midst, as treatable as it is Right, now. and in the midst of the Great Depression, when people are standing <laughs> outside of job people. sites, Vaccines. waiting for people to get hurt just so they could take that job, you get diagnosed with something like TB. And TB, from what I understand, was supposed to be highly contagious at one point. But it sounds so playful. Hey, <laughs> What's going on, man? Oh, I can't really go out today. I got the TB. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm just well, going to stay in Pop watch the penicillin, TB. Watch some Netflix and chill. Take care of your TB. My By TB. yourself? Yeah. yeah they didn't Netflix have Netflix and chill. Did so you imagine the, the commercial for that? Oh, Jesus TB Christ. got you down. Oh, <laughs> no, in the 1930s, it's more like, jingle. TB, might as well have the rickets. Huh. Jesus, right? right? Polio is the new TB. One of my best yeah, friends growing up was a dude named Ricketts. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway. Was he a real person? Yeah, yeah Sam Ricketts, my he best friend growing up. That is a bad Rick thing. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, he's kind of a toxic person <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Rickety Cricket. So, uh, Pateski. I like your reference. <laughs> Rickety Cricket. I love where they had him wrestling. <laughs> 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 Are we talking anyway. about Always Sunny? Yeah. 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 Of okay. course. <laughs> All right. So anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he ended up collecting about 20 weeks worth of sick pay, but unfortunately he missed his application date for workman's comp. Hold on. Which... Again, so he, so his uh, his pay was pretty scrimped uh, if he was just working off of uh, vacation pay, which means he has the time. That's where my thought process is going. Where did this guy have the time? Well, that's, make these that's, bombs. that's what we're going to get into. So, so no, 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 hold on, hold on. One more question on this. If we were to put this into a comic book scenario, which we're what the fuck is doing. Joker's part-time job? Telling stand-up comedy. I mean, if there was oh, still a Spencer's, <laughs> he probably worked that's at a Hot Topic or a Spencer's, to be honest He with works at Hot Topic. The Joker's at the ice cream shop. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you've ever read the Alan Moore killing joke, man, Dude, I mean, Joker's gelatos. Joker's gelatos. I like. He spells it with a J as opposed to a yeah. G. Yeah. Mr. J, Mr. J, we're all out of the. All right, yeah. Anyway, so um, he act, after a while he actually ended up being let go because tuberculosis. I don't know what the fuck you gonna do? But he tried to appeal the workman's comp denial uh, three different times. The last appealing was actually in 1936. So keep in mind, like I said, the midst of the Great Depression. The depression didn't end until 1939. Like yeah. he he 
no job. So even he's as a sick. vet, he's disabled. He yeah. 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 So he a had disabled nothing. vet. Yeah. And for all we know, screwed. for all yeah. we know, he was taking care of his two spinster sisters. You know what I mean? Spinster sisters. So the scissor sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Scissor me timbers. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna go ahead and cut to November of 1940. In November of 1940, a wooden toolbox ended up on the windowsill inside a crude short length of uh, brass pipe was found. All right, So filled with gunpowder and an ignition mechanism that was made out of sugar and flashlight batteries. Dang. Also inside <laughs> this box. Yeah. <laughs> so also inside this box was a note that read, Con Edison Crooks, this is for you. Written in very distinctive block letters and signed FP. All right, FP, so huh? that's when shit was personal back then. Right, but, well, but real quick, we're saying, while we're on it, <laughs> if you were gonna leave a bomb, would you leave a fucking note in the box? Like, if you intended for that to actually, ignite, but no, 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 that, that's the difference. Was it in some sort of encasing where it would have, you know, still been readable? It was in like it some weird cans or whatever, that, and that's that just a box. Yeah. That, that wasn't what he was doing. Look, he yeah, was sending that a message there to be like, look, I can put a bomb wherever the. Fuck I exactly. Want. Okay. Exactly. Just so you know. All right. It wasn't about the letter, although the letter made it personal. If someone was able to read that letter, it wasn't about the letter. I see. So okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he just wanted to imply the powerful potential exactly. that yeah, he, the power he, he had, had at yeah. that point in time. Power move. He's which, like, if I wanted to blow some shit up, I could. I do could. It. Any yeah. <laughs> so in September Stop. of 1941, a bomb with a similar ignition system was uh, lying in the street about five blocks away from Con Ed's headquarters building at 4th Irving Place. Ooh, now, sounds like that one fell off the truck. Right. Well, no note, <laughs> no note was with this one. There was, there was no note, and it was also a dud. So, so far, two bombs not exploding. All right. Now, police speculated that the bomber maybe spotted a nearby officer, dropped it, and ran without actually setting the fuse. So the first two bombs with no bang, then shortly after the U.S. entered World War II in December of 1941. We all remember that, right? Which obviously takes all the attention away from what right. he's doing because no, all, like, all, all so, eyes are abroad. And so. so the police received this a letter time for once again in big block letters, all right? And the letter read, it said, uh, I will make no more bomb units for the duration of the war. My patriotic feelings have made me decide this. Later, I will bring the Con Edison to justice. They will pay for their dastardly deeds. I love that title. Dirty deeds. No, done dastardly deeds. Yeah. Just the word dastardly. I don't know. Ever since right. a kid, Rick, it's actually my I best mean, friend. He's, going from, say, Hanna, he's going from a DC villain to a Hanna-Barbera villain so fucking fast. <laughs> Snidely whiplash, dude. That's what it is. Hold on, hold on. Don't you dare so put like down a, a Hanna-Barbera villain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those Ruskies well, he rookie? are no joke. Mm. No. <laughs> Nah, uh, it bull, sounds like Bullwinkle sounds like makes me a, think of Moose and Supernatural. To yeah. English, moose, yeah. moose and Squill. All right, you know so I mean? he really looked inside himself and was like, "Nah, there's there's a war going on. Maybe I should." Well, up keep in time. mind he's an ex-marine. He's a vet. Yeah. He's a vet. World War One. So man. yeah. All right, so 1951. All right, so he wasn't lying. All right, there were no bombs for the decade between 1941 to 1951. Instead, he was sending the written equivalent of crank calls to police stations, private citizens, and of course, Con Ed. Yeah. And let, <laughs> and, 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 well, well, because he didn't want to be forgotten, in spite right. of the fact that he wasn't doing orchestrating any big stuff. Right. He's like, don't could you, forget about me. Could you me. imagine reading the don't. headlines? You know, you come home from New York City, blah blah blah, blah wherever you're at. You read the newspaper, you're like, oh, look, there's bombings going on. Random bombings. He's sending things out. And you get home, and there's a package at your door. <laughs> That's the thing, though. There were no bombings. There was just some shit in a box left somewhere. But the, the thing is, just some shit in a box. That's all it takes. When you're Potential. on an airplane, B O M is all it takes, and you're gone. You're gone. Bomb How did that work in no, the late it, 90s when everything was the bomb? <laughs> because there was it was people trying uh, to take that word uh, back. You know, power you know, is in words well, because people fear yeah, yeah, the power of that word, the <laughs> repercussions <laughs> of that word. No, it's two thousand. Wait, yeah, that was some no, deep shit. Yeah, we're showing our stupidity He's here. We have two separate conversations. Going anyway, on. all right. So, like I said, there are no bombs for the decade between nineteen forty one and nineteen fifty one. He sent postcards and letters to private citizens, cops, and of course, Con Ed. Uh, <laughs> Which is kind of foreshadowing for the eventual capture, but we'll get into that on the next episode. So investigators studied every one of these uh, letters, postcards, everything. They, they paid close attention, especially to the fact that they were all penciled, penciled big block letters. All right. They noticed that the G's and the Y's had a really odd shape. So that led them to think that maybe they had narrowed it down to somebody with a European education. What 
that has to do with G's and Y's, I have absolutely no idea. Well, it's it's the way they write. Right. Uh, it's it's how how it was written. Uh, you got to think too. A lot of people back in the time too didn't write in print like that when they wrote letters. It a lot like of times, letters are yeah, very, very variation. Uh, really uh, when I learned when <laughs> I learned cursive, it was called Danelian. and my cursive is a lot different than the cursive they teach in this school. This cursive looks like. It's Shit, European it cursive, yeah. so it, it's there is a difference in the thing. When you write something, how the pressure you press onto a piece of paper can tell so much about a human being. Truly. It's insane what a profiler can learn just from a single pencil stroke. And that's what we're going to get to in the next episode. That's still foreshadowing. You guys are just like jumping the gun. Side topic, though. I like Crazy. it. Dude's no, 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 no. Batman. Good. Side topic, though. You guys, can you guys you have a very analytical mind, and I like that. That's what we're going for. Can you so. believe, though, that they don't teach kids cursive in school anymore? Oh, they're bringing it back. They're bringing it are back. Are they now? Yeah, they're, they're bringing, bringing it back. back. They're bringing it back. Okay. In all honesty, what's the point when everything's digital what is the, anyways? Do you know what's so funny? There's a calligraphy font. I was having a conversation just the other day with somebody at the day job, and uh, we were talking about how we had this this young girl working there, you know, like 18, 19, something like that. And she commented to all of the older you know, people on staff, like, oh, you have such nice handwriting. I never write. I'm always just typing everything, so I have horrible handwriting. And I'm like, you see? Yeah, you see. That's why yeah. I have a physical notebook, and I write physical notes, and I'm, I'm very tangible in that sort of aspect. No, my handwriting is shit. I'm trying to read this right now. <laughs> and you're losing it. And I wrote it. I wrote it. All right, so uh, anyway... So the break-in bombs till the new bomb was found led the investigators to believe that maybe the person was serving in the military. Even though they were receiving postcards or anything else, I mean, there was no real return address that they could track down or anything else. Otherwise, I'm sure they would have by that time. So they started thinking that maybe they were serving in the military at the time. So that maybe that, that led to why there was the break-in bombs, why the original letter said that I'm a patriot, all that stuff. Was he in World War II? Do we know? Uh, no. No, okay. he's one. He had TB. He oh, wasn't yeah, going anywhere. Right. Yeah, 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 so he yeah, was yeah. automatic. Good point. Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. so yeah. benched. So starting his new wave of bombings, Mateski started uh, choosing public places and buildings, hitting uh, several of the same places multiple times, and I'm going to cover that in the list of bombs to come. So the first bomb in the new wave was found on March 29th, 1951. It was the first to actually explode. So now we're breaking records yeah. here, guys. So he scared the hell out of commuters in Grand Central Station, where the bomb had been. You know locked. what that is? They that, have to up the ante, though. They that, have to. It's that like, first it's bomb like that explodes. Sequel aspect, you right. know? You that first bomb that better. explodes. That's like a murderer's first kill. Yeah. yeah I'm well, back, it also bitch. shows that he he crossed a threshold. Exactly. Right. That know? goes from killing an animal to killing. And a you person. can only assume he spent the next ten years that he took off trying to make better bombs, better mechanisms. Was, or maybe yeah, he was like. When you said that, I mean, like, maybe he was or, like. Or, or maybe he was sugar wrestling and flashlight with, batteries. <laughs> or, or maybe he was just wrestling with himself about whether he should do it or not. It's possible. You know, and it's maybe his life just did not improve in that yeah. time, and so the the rage just festered. As How long did it take from when the war started to when he first put that bomb? Uh, he stopped during. Oh, no, it, no. it wasn't until after the war. It wasn't until 1951. The first bomb okay. went off uh, in March of 1951. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So he waited. He waited the he decade waited he promised. Well, and also like way after World War yeah. II was even finished. You yeah. Know? So so what made him decide? To finally, I mean, he was a he, vet. He gave them yeah. grieving time for all the. Well, well I mean, not just to go back to it. Not just a vet, but give yeah. credence to the fact a, that he a was a marine. Vet. No, a, a There's a different marine. Yeah, somebody I mean, was. All vets, all vets have that pride. But World there's something War One, man, marine pride. trench warfare and everything. That's a war that yeah. I don't think gets as much coverage as World War Two. But it was a brutal war. I mean, that's where chemical warfare was first coming in. Right, things like that. Oh yeah, World War One was insane. Yeah, and that's where tanks. First tanks, yeah, yeah. That's gotta be crazy. U boats. Technology so, was so far advanced at that point in time, beyond what we could. Conflict comprehend. often is an igniter for advancing of technology. It's crazy how I mean, that works, what, right? What do you gonna have with us aliens? Get run over by a tank. Ancient aliens. That might be somewhere. Silence. Dead mic. <laughs> All right. Mic so, drop. <laughs> bam. Anyway, <laughs> scaring the hell out of commuters in Grand Central Station, where the bomb had been left in a sand urn near the Grand Central Oyster Bar and Restaurant. There was no injuries. Close. Now, in April, the next bomb exploded in a telephone booth in the New York Public Library. Again, no injuries. He was and, trying to get Superman. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sending a message more so than really yeah. wanting to inflict harm on yeah. people, Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get into what he liked to use for his actual explosions. Oh, we're waiting um, for that. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, he didn't exactly choose, like, a barrel. He used a very small caliber round. And that's, and that's, so, I mean, it kind of shows there's more for shock value. Exactly. But we'll, we'll yeah. get into that when Spectacle we describe the profiling as opposed aspect. to, yeah, yeah, trying to harm. He wants so, change. He's a radical. <laughs> so in August, a phone booth bomb went off at Grand Central 
Again, no injuries. These bombs were so uneventful that the police dismissed them as just happenings of, quote, boys or pranksters. It didn't stop the New York Times, though. They printed the story the next day. A brief three-paragraph description, but press nonetheless. And, of course, he was like, yes. Yes. He had finally... I made he, it. He feels Looks like he... Like yeah. I made it. Right. So the next bomb was planted in a phone booth at the Con Ed headquarters at 4th and Irving Place. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ooh, he's hold getting on. closer to his site. For sure. Yeah, he's hold like, on. Yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're and the fact Take, that they put phone it in Phone booth a, was a good thing, so now we'll do a phone booth at the place I want to buy. No, no, no. The I'm fact eventually going to get him. <laughs> he yep. continued to do the phone booth so close means that he wanted to keep it contained. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. more shock value. That's, oh, yeah. that's one of the things. That's kind of what it shows. He kept it in... Yeah, exactly. All right. So the next bomb planted in the phone booth. Blah, blah, blah. Also, uh, hold on. In the 1950s, I'm sure there was a shit ton of phone booths. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Compared to <laughs> oh, now, yeah. we don't even have many. Phone, phone booths and newspaper stands. That's yeah. what made yeah. Superman so powerful. Man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they still use them for Doctor Who, but that's, so, that's about it. <laughs> walking so down this, any street, you could change, man. So this is before. I mean, this is definitely when they started the whole "if it fits, it ships" things. Because not only did he put one in the phone booth, he also mailed them a bomb. <laughs> so, and the one that didn't explode is the one that was handled the roughest <laughs> so yeah the one that got mailed actually didn't explode no no real knowing of whether or not they wanted to or anything else anyway the phone booth bomb did explode and again there was no injuries so we're, we're at like almost seven bombs now where it's uneventful the police are dismissing it as pranksters I mean so he's like, it he does almost seem like a prankster though. yeah I mean the way he's going about it he's, right. like he's not trying to hurt anybody bomb. he's just playing I just imagine like twisting a mustache man you know what I mean he's chaotic good He's so, chaotic he's good. Up, but he wants a change. Uh, that, this might be leading to a, a Dungeons & Dragons podcast in the future. All right, so on October 22nd, the New York Herald Tribune received a letter in pencil block letters stating, Bombs will continue until the Consolidated Edison Company is brought to justice for their dastardly acts against me. I have exhausted all other means, intend with bombs to cause others to cry out for justice for me. That letter directed police to the Paramount Theater in Times Square. There, they found and disabled a bomb. Then they were led to a telephone booth at Pennsylvania Station, where nothing was found. However... Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. These police... <laughs> okay. Off of one letter, were like, I'm Batman. I'm no, Batman. no, 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 no. <laughs> this guy's over here. He this gave, bomb's over he, here. Just no. before it hits one, disable it. His letters are now being printed in the paper. So now he's like, oh yeah? No you can find one here. Oh, you can find one here. Happy Easter, motherfuckers. Like mm-hmm. he was, yeah, he was going oh, off. He's setting off yeah. Goose chase. He's, yeah. No, he's getting the notoriety he wants. He's getting so he's attention. He's drunk on the exactly. a little bit. Yeah. No, yeah. Absolute press corrupts absolutely. I, I guess. would concur with that, despite yeah. being a journalist for 10 Pretty years. Pretty much yeah. like, <laughs> look how big my big. Old cock is in the newspaper. That's kind of what that boiled down to. Now, that everybody's, means children. now everybody's looking at him. Now you don't have fatty, no fatty. small penis. He might have been a farmer. Right. We don't know. Yeah, they, they smell penis. He they might have been old McDonald's. Big <laughs> so anyway. Big so after disabling the bomb, they led to the telephone booth at Pennsylvania Station where nothing was found. However, on November 28th, a coin-operated locker at the IRT 4th Street subway station was bombed again. No injuries. Now, nearby, or sorry, nearly the end of the year. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you sure this guy just isn't trying to celebrate Fourth of July every so often? He's such a patriot that every day's Independence Day. Yeah, no, you know he didn't blow anything up for ten years. He had to make up for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what we're getting. making up. You're for gonna lost see. Time. <laughs> you're gonna see once 1952 hits the barrage uh, of bombs and start coming. He was. He got the shit in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. All right, so Blame nearly it all in Mexico. <laughs> So nearly, nearly at the end of the year, the Herald Tribune received yet another letter. But this time, it was slightly more taunting. He's getting balls, guys. It says, have you noticed the bombs in your city? If you are worried, I am sorry. And also, if anyone is injured. But it cannot be helped. For justice will be served. I am not well. And for this, I will make the Con Edison sorry. Yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This guy just went from being the Joker to being a man after my heart. <laughs> yes, they Man. will regret their dastardly deeds. I will bring them before the bar of justice. Public opinion will condemn them for beware. I will place more units under theater seats in the near future. Signed, FP. Whoa. I just love alliteration and dastardly deeds well, every time I hear it. I'm like, movie oh. theaters do? I was about okay. to say, dudes are just watching a movie, enjoying a good freaking movie, eating good. popcorn they a overpriced nice for. The yep, day. trying to cut a hole in the box of yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You spend the nickel, you expect something in return. I'm just saying, a nickel was a lot back then. All right. It was a lot. So, 
1952, guys. 1952 was a real banner year for old Georgie. Oh, boy. On March 19th, a bomb exploded Georgie. in a phone booth at Port Authority bus terminal. Again, no injuries. So June and December bombs went in seats at the Lexington Avenue Lowe's Theater. The December bombing was the first bomb to actually injure someone. After that, the police asked the papers to stop printing any letters in order to downplay earlier bombings as public interest was now increasing. Everyone now knew that a mad bomber was on the loose. Oh, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Um, I love the use of the word mad because you don't really know if he's mad like a mad scientist or if he's mad like, I'm mad. I'm mad. Like, Somebody threw a chair. I, I would honestly say it's a bit of both. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm mad. Pretty mad. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. I want you to get mad. So 1953. Mad as hell and I can't take it anymore. 1953, bombs exploded in seats at Radio City Music Hall and at the Capitol Theater near the Oyster Bar in Grand Central again. So he's kind of hitting familiar yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Now, 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 now well, were these places bet... closely approximated to his former uh, well, you have former Grand employer? Central Station. Well, I mean, it, it's hit or miss. It's kind of all over the city. Keep in mind, he's living in Connecticut. So he's commuting to drop bombs off. It's not that far. Which, which commute, means though, we that... don't know if he has a job. How is he paying for the gas? Is he taking these bombs on the train? I th- well, the thing is, that's what I'm saying. Is, uh... I still need gas. The fifties, they still had them bitches around. They only had the train. There was the Roaring Twenties, man, and then or was it the Roaring Fifties? The fifties had the Model T, Ford, and everything else going on. He was taking yeah, but but they still had those train systems that go all through like yeah Connecticut, New Hampshire, and if you go all of New England and you know surrounding you go to New York right now, you could probably hop a train without paying for it, man. I'm just saying. Yeah, you can take take the train to Pittsburgh. I'm just going in to get some chowder. You just gotta be you just gotta be slick and be shadows like Batman. I don't think this guy was slick. We're gonna get into why. I don't know. He's uh. He sounds like he's got a lot of bombs in a lot of places. Okay. Well, well, and he has. I got backstory. bombs in, in low okay. places so, where the whiskey drowns. So from the 1930s to the 1950s, police work was still this. Just where is he? They were still strong. They were no better than the crooks at the time. They were just strong arming people to get information. There was there was no DNA. There was no true. real. Yeah. There was real no real forensics. It was more so just going on a hunch. and yeah, what little like, evidence you could accumulate. Exactly. Time, you know? Gut feeling, boy. You know? Which is what made yeah. those detectives back in those days, like Dick Tracy, so fucking awesome. And well, right. uh, but, yeah, I, got a I mean, badasses, obviously. Yeah, but right. you know, once forensics comes in and you realize how many people were wrongfully accused and convicted yeah. of things, so it's there just was crazy. in the wrong place at the wrong time. So. Besides hitting, you know, the Oyster Bar in Grand Central again, he also Oysters. hit another coin-operated rental locker. But again, there was no injuries for any of these bombs. But police described the locker bomb as a homemade product of a publicity-seeking jerk, which I'm sure the word jerk held a little bit more cadence back then. <laughs> uh, an unexplained it sounds bomb. sounds like an accurate assessment in some ways, though. Right, right. Yeah, no, yeah, that's know? what they're trying to down to. Yeah. yeah. They're not really wrong. So yeah. uh, an unexplained bomb was actually found in a rental locker at Pennsylvania Station again. Wait, hold on. There was no masturbation involved. Sorry, in not unexplained. Right? <laughs> Unexploded. Ah. That one didn't go off. So he's hitting, 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 and then another dud. So, <laughs> and, later on, dud. and later on, you'll find out that he was just planting bombs, and then one would explode and be like, I planted that months ago. Why the fuck did that go off right now? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. maybe like, he even forgot about it to some degree if he's planting all these other stuff like that. A little bit, yeah. Like that. yeah. So now, now we're cutting to oh. ni- 1954. Or, or he's like, what the hell took so long? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's sugar. <laughs> you know? <Yeah>. So anyway, <laughs> Could you imagine that situation? A bomb goes off and he hears it in the paper and he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I just imagine every time a bomb explodes, his reaction is the same as the Joker's when he's sitting there hitting the switch outside the fucking hospital in the dark like, night. Oh, that's oh, where oh, I yeah. put Okay, one. yeah, all right. Oh, man. All right. Or maybe so, it's like an Easter hunt. You know, you I really like that candy right. 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 shop next door. So, 1954, there was a bomb wedged behind a sink in Grand Central Terminal Men's Restroom, all right? It exploded in March, injuring only slightly, slightly injuring three men. That could be anything. That could be an uh, abrasion. Yeah. So, I mean, that could have been like, you know, anything. So, November 7th at Radio City Music Hall, during a Bing Crosby's White Christmas... I'm dreaming. So not Bing Crosby. Isn't it no, not that's... Bing Crosby, isn't it? No, uh, that, that was totally that not. That was Louis Armstrong. Yeah, you're oh! doing Louis big time, bro. Oh, Crosby. shit. Bing Crosby sounds uh, a lot like Frank Sinatra. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate when to I tell you that this Christmas man is a fraud. When I think of White Christmas... Christmas... Oh, I got you. When I think of White Just Christmas... Just like the ones I used to know. know. Yeah. All right, well, you guys can go fuck yourselves. I'm so anyway, dreaming of a white I, I can see him covering it too. I'm strong. Yeah. Oh boy. I had that song in my head the whole time I was writing this, and I was like, I'm so glad that you guys correct me because now I feel like a fool. Ah, anyway, geez. you're welcome. So, so November 7th, 
All right, at the music hall, at the, at the Radio City Music Hall, during the Bing Crosby White Christmas performance, a bomb stuffed under a seat cushion in the 15th row exploded, injuring four people. All right, now. Then, Why did he choose 15? He was just trying to get a handy man. 15th row, that's the back back then. Yeah. <laughs> Hammer. So yeah. the heavy upholstery muffled the explosion sound, and only people really, really close to it actually heard it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So anyway, if there's an explosion in a movie theater, I don't care where the fuck you're at, you're going to hear it. How tiny was this bomb? Are we talking like a little battery bomb? Is this what's going on? Are these the bombs that are going off in 1952? Nobody knows about atomic bombs? That's why they've been summed up to pranks half the time. They weren't large explosions. So this dude is literally taking pencil sharpeners and turning them into bombs. No, he's bullet casings. Dude, he is a man after my heart. I always figured if I ever became a villain, I would never be a main villain. I'm just a guy that annoys Batman. It's honestly in some ways the equivalent of just like leaving exploding turd bag. (laughs) That's kind of what it is. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. it's like he's He's not hurting anybody. This guy just got tired of collecting shit. That's he's all like, he's like I threw some black cats in there. His, his, was, a bag of crap his was the original the design door. for cherry bombs. Might yes. fuck up a toilet, but everybody's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So, in in so, some ways, that's the best way. That that's why where they're like a spectacle seeking jerk or whatever. It kind of it's spot on. Yeah. For, yeah. Right. Yeah. So so yeah. while the film while the film continued, the injured were escorted, not rushed, not carried, but they were escorted. They could fucking walk. The injured were escorted to the theater's first aid session. They were session. like debating. They're like, I still might want to see the movie. Well, I'm getting to that. I'm, 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 I'm getting to that. Okay, so thirty-four dollars. <laughs> so fifty people in the immediate area were just simply asked to move to the back of the theater to finish the show. Yeah, and all it's right. Like, that's you don't want any panic. You don't want to have to issue any refunds or anything of right. that nature. Right. So, you know, we so, don't need wait, wait, so you, you don't want to give a, back a nickel. No it matter. gets chance, worse. There's a chance there was someone in that theater. <laughs> That didn't even know what happened. They were just like, not oh, a I chance. The there was not ton, a chance. There was ton, tons they, of people yeah. who had no idea. Looks like I'm look, getting ah, a tug. Ah. It took up to an hour and a half. It took after up to an hour and a half later after the movie and the fucking preceding stage show for the police to actually come in and rope off 150 seats and then start their investigation. The show must go on. Seemingly. This guy does not seem like a villain. He <laughs> just seems like the a The show nuisance. must go on. That's what I'm saying. Like, it was nothing to them. They're like, all right, you're hurt. You limp to the back, fucker. So when you guys, please move move, move to the back. When does he up his ante? That's what we're getting to. Ah. All right. 20 bucks says the movie theater was like, nah, these people are paying for their seats. <laughs> yeah, nobody's getting any 20 bucks refunds. back then was way more money. Yeah. So, yes, so, I, I appreciate the number. <laughs> so, in 1955, all right, so just bypass the rest of 1954. In 1955, oh, a bomb yeah. exploded. Back to the future, bro. Yeah, right, a bomb exploded without injury on the on the platform at the IRT Sutter Ave subway station in Brooklyn. All right, so a bomb exploded on the main floor of Macy's department store. Uh, it was hung under <laughs> like a club, <laughs> right? Macy's again. Uh, Macy's. <laughs> so it was hung under a phone booth shelf, but no injuries. All right, the two bombs that exploded without injuries at Pennsylvania Station, one in a phone booth and one in a rental locker. So, I mean, again, there's no injuries happening. And then there was a warning phone call re- revealing yet another bomb location hidden at the Radio City Music Hall once again. So he's now like, oh, here's some more bombs. Here's this, here's that. But it's not hurting anybody. And that might be by intent. You know what I think? I think it was definitely by design. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he spent that 10 years planting all these bombs. And now he's like setting them off. Like they're remote. It's a possibility. But... It might be. Not when they're that small of an explosion. I'm sorry. It, I don't care where you are. You got to think about the technology that's available to him at that point in time. Unless he's with aliens, he's not doing a remote explosion <laughs> in 1954. Well, no, but like, no, put so, the bomb yeah, but, but there I mean, we don't know the couple years later. And yeah, we don't know the triggering stage. mechanisms either. Yeah, there's know, no I way. Mean. There's no way he would have been caught. He would have been caught. Well, that's what we're. It's like that's like so that's like a pipe like, bomb. He rips off the top, and chucks it in there. But yet, also with all the distractions, no, but they're, they're, well, they're, they're not all pipe bombs. So the description of the bombs themselves were roughly like six-inch brass pipes with screw caps on the end. All right, so yeah, he had so, all the powder, all the ignition connected to the side. So he's not. That's what it was. The chances are, somebody's picking these bombs up if they're not going off, messing with these bombs, and the bombs are then going off. I don't think he's the one setting the bombs off. He's just like, if it works, Did you works, like it works. read the show notes before this? Because you're just like describe. All right, I'm look. just Batman. All right, <laughs> at the... <laughs> all right, Will Arnett. You're I... not Batman. You're Fat Man. All right, I so at the rock, Fat Titty Man. Lego so... Batman, dude. For That's the win. my fave. Yeah, it's so awesome. Will Arnett's the shit. So anyway, at the <laughs> Will Arnett, if you're listening to this, you want to be on an episode. All right, so at the Roxy Theater, a bomb dropped out of a slash seat. Thank you for onto that. an upholsterer's workbench without exploding. All right, so the guy's getting ready to fix these the upholstery on a lot of these seats. He sees the slash, the bomb falls out, hits his workbench, and he's just like, "No!" This is, this is the true hero. 
Nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing. No explosion. Not near right? him, uh, so this battery falls out, and he's like, oh! However, <laughs> however, a seat bomb exploded at the Paramount Theater. Uh, one so person was struck on the shoe by the bomb, but he reported no injury. He's like, hold on, hold on. Yeah, and he's again, like, oh, they just again. It. These don't sound like they're bombs. They sound like they're poppers you get at the freaking like fucking fucking fire. Yeah. Right. Like, okay. I, like, I don't know what else to tell you. This guy is not a mad bomber. He's just an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> like, oh, they just smudged my puma. <laughs> <Right. Right. laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that today? Could you imagine that day you go, you're, you're off to go see Saw Twenty Nine. You put your foot down and <laughs> something pops on your foot. You're not going to pay attention. You're going to be like, oh, oh, well, fuck. There goes 30 bucks. That's exactly what you're going to think. It's going to be nothing to you. I don't think it even really affected the shoes because shoes were still made out of real leather back then. <laughs> and not by Asian kids. Those were American shoes. No, those were still like, Asian kids in America. It hurt him just enough to be like, yeah, I probably should tell somebody about that. <laughs> and he's all, hey. No, bad so, thing. They just <laughs> they just made it a thing. Every usher asked everyone, "Did you report any bombs? Did you report yeah. any bombs?" <laughs> okay. So, so guys, like, yeah, I stepped on a bomb. I think uh, it could have been my watch. I all right. Could have been like a weird twisted bag of M and M's. He's taking credit for things that were not. Was, there's some other bomber out there who's mimicking him and is like, "No, that was mine." <laughs> So although the bomb itself was uneventful, the police did find a pen knife, which pushed them to think, uh, which also actually there were several pen knives found at multiple theater locations where bombs had gone off, which made the, which made the police think that he left them there in case he was stopped or questioned after leaving the scene. Um, but that December, a bomb exploded without injury in a Grand Central men's room stall. Again, no injury. He's blowing up toilets. It does kind of. You think a sixteen-year-old fucking kid? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Seriously, seriously, let's 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 think about that. So this is a man who's scarred from war. This is a man who has PTSD. Big time, obviously. (laughs) Big time. No, no, no. no, no. At that time, it was shell shock. Am I right? It's shell shock. It's this. Or, 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 no, no. Sorry, World War Two. Battle fatigue. It's well, I mean, just, I mean, it's World the War same. Now, it's the same yeah. thing. No matter what you call it, different toilet, different shit. It's the same situation. The same soldiers deal same with the same people. shit. Yeah. yeah. And so you got this guy who's probably just reverted back to a phase in his life where explosions and blowing up things didn't mean watching his buddies get torn from limb to limb. So maybe that's where some point of his end of his life that makes sense is to blow up toilets and people's shoes maybe he's reverted back to the prankster child he was or he's just an idiot we're gonna cover that mm-hmm. <laughs> so 1956 all right a 74 year old men's room attendant at pennsylvania station was seriously injured when a bomb in a toilet exploded oh seriously Another injured? One. hold on how serious was the injury? Do you he know? was 74 he was if he got sneezed on pieces of yeah oh toilet. yeah 74 in 1950 fucking five years yeah yeah, yeah. You are fragile as glass. Yeah. You, <laughs> they didn't have Walmart for him to work at, so he's cleaning. If you clothes. made it to if you made yeah. it to seventy four in nineteen fifty four, people fucking wipe your body. You, did you know Jesus? Did you? Right, know Jesus? So, anyway, a young man had reported. A young man had reported an obstruction, and the old man tried to plunge it out. Ah! Right? Uh, now, in the debris, we'll plunge the monster out. <laughs> in the debris, investigators. So wait a minute. This kid pooped on a bomb. And it didn't flush. And then he got the whole man to come in. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He pooped on the bomb. He fits it. I'm just saying. He fits it. I'm just saying. I think. This just is so you guys happened. know, Fitz is the my dog. The fertilizer might have ignited things. it better. Anyway, so. That means the It had extra explosives. All right, so in the debris, investigators found a, uh, a watch frame and a wool sock. Now, this wool sock has actually popped up at multiple locations for the bombs. He had a thing for, <laughs> yeah. he had a, he had a thing for stuffing his six inch pipe in wool socks. Nah, yeah. but I'm. Psh- Wait no no so he left evidence I mean, of himself. Did he put the it's pipe the nineteen fifties. It doesn't I, I, matter. I understand that, but Batman would have fucking figured this <laughs> out. <laughs> he took it back to Alfred. Yeah. Alfred took it a couple yeah. of legs so, and been like, "This is genius, so bro." He left. <laughs> this he left, is an Englishman. <laughs> he left a watch casing. He left a wool sock. I mean, yeah, okay. So just like the pen knives, personal knize, things, personal things, <laughs> exactly. So just like the pen knives, wool socks were actually a reoccurring element in the bombings. So, God, I'm in like the wrong said, century. I could have been a villain, an excellent dude, villain. How easy was like, it? Like a hundred years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So now we're cutting to the luckiest man in New York. Are you guys ready? It's Do a it. dude who fucking doesn't have a bomb <laughs> strategy. No, 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 no. So the luckiest man in New York at the time was a guard at the RCA building in Rockefeller Center. He took home a piece of pipe for a plumbing project that a fellow guard had actually found in a telephone booth. Oh, God. They don't read the fucking paper. so Because they t- can't read at that point. He t- well, he took the pipe home, left it on his kitchen table, went to bed, and his... <laughs> 
So he took it back to his New Jersey home. I mean, commuting toll booths, you know, that's a big deal. I bet this fool was like flipping it on the way home and yeah. shit. The bomb Whistling. exploded in his kitchen. Wow. It went off on his kitchen table. It made the ride all the way back to New Jersey. It, him handling going, all right, I wonder what kind of pet, you know. It he made it all it the like way back. Times. It just really makes you wonder what the detonation that's what, mechanism. Yeah, exactly. Like, what the, like, what now, happened to set it off? Him, his wife, and his children all sleeping upstairs. Bomb yeah. goes off in his kitchen. This time, it's not... It's not in case. There's there's no phone booth. There's no urn. There's no trash can. It went off in his kitchen. Fucked up. So does this finally up the stakes a little bit because of the fact that it left a mark on his table and nobody was injured? No, it didn't up shit. Oh, but, well, I mean, <laughs> just just for the sheer fact that it could have though. Because, right. Yeah, you know, yeah. 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 I mean, he had Most proper definitely. placements and all these other things. This, this was taken. Like this hat. was taken mistakenly to a private residence. Yes. You know, and then you know could have inflicted. This guy is losing harm. my heart. Luckily, here. luckily. Losing. luckily it didn't. Right. Aww. But none, nonetheless, that shows the potential that, you know, and maybe this is where his, his meddling, I mean, he's just like, oh, man. I don't know. And he's like, oh, man, I could have actually killed well, well, the next time I should actually take the chance. He wanted to kill anybody. No, no, no. Yeah, ex extreme, exactly. Yeah. You know? And he actually he actually talks about that later. Maybe he's down so, that. A December 2nd bombing at the Paramount Theater in Brooklyn left six of the 1,500 occupants injured. One of them actually pretty seriously. So you talk about up, up in the ante. He yeah, actually well, here's where it happens. seriously injured somebody this time. That one actually drew uh, a lot of attention and tremendous news coverage. Uh, the next day, December 3rd, 1956, Police Commissioner Stephen P. Kennedy ordered what he called the greatest manhunt in history of the police department. Yeah, so, so I now see it's, that as something that broke the camel's back. And they're like, right. okay, this is a prankster going beyond their previous yeah. perpetrations or whatever. Let's stop it now before one becomes 30. Yeah. Before 30 becomes 50. Before yeah. 50 becomes me. Yeah. Exactly. Preventative treatment. I so, mean, yeah. go so now, after it before it turns into something really big, like a snowball going downhill. And, you know. and, and I mean, and, and of course, I mean, between the letters and everything else they're receiving, at this time, it's no longer pranksters. At this time, it's like this somebody's doing something intentionally. Well, things I escalate, mean, though. You right. know? And, and, and that's and, where you realize you're like, okay, this could turn into something really big and dastardly. As, as <laughs> right. And you got to figure, I mean, I don't know how many, everybody was on board World War II. Everybody was like, there was, there was the heart and the, and the soul of like, yes, patriotism, you know, and everything else like that. But at the same time, in New York, where Wall Street's still running strong, the banks are reclaiming their, 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 their monetary victory, so to speak. That war economy, man. Yeah, they don't know if it was just one man or if it was copycats right and left, but, but now they're, they're, they see the pattern. They actually are starting to follow the shit. Now they're like, okay, this has been going on for five years. This needs to come to an end. So December twenty fourth, all right, Christmas Eve of nineteen fifty six. For five years, he's been fucking smudging people's shoes. Right. Yeah. So a New York public library clerk dropped a coin on the floor while trying to, you know, use a telephone in the phone booth. He looked up after grabbing his coin and saw a maroon colored sock, all right, uh, held on to the underside of the shelf by a magnet. Inside this sock was an iron pipe with threaded caps on each end. After he had the gathering of the minds between him and his employees, they decided that the best thing to do with this was to throw it out a window into the public Bryant Park. Wow. They Yeah. Great right. logic there. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I'm hey guys. Self, I'm self smart. What do you want to do with this there, man? Give me a pipe, man. I don't know. Why are we throwing in a big crowd there? Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. Why, why do you always hit everything with a stick? Why do you always throw everything in the yeah. park? <laughs> <laughs> no, bad thing. So. This one actually brought the bomb squad and more than 60 New York Police Department officers and detectives to the scene. Yo, I've personally seen the bomb squad. They're no joke, but they look okay. like a bunch of pansies walking so real in. Quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Holding each hands. In the, uh, in the 1950s, in the 1950s, 40s, 30s, the way that the bomb squad's attire was, was actually, it was just like metal wicker. It looked like whisker mm. baskets over their head. It looked like whisker suits. And they'd roll up in a little wicker car. Like, it was all wicker. It was like, but it was all metal intertwined, okay? Mm -hmm. And they would work through their wicker. Like it was, it was chicken you have, wire. You have obviously Dude. seen seen the photos. From yeah, the it's time. it's <laughs> it's pretty. It looks like the worst night in knighthood. If I just had it's seen a chicken wire everywhere. night. Come on, me fool! Exactly. Oh. I feel like a knight would be better protected from fucking explosion than that guy. Yeah, because at least it's right. solid covering. It's all right. So, so real quick. All right. The next month, the New York Journal American received a letter from Metesky, and it stated that the bombs. Uh, and the seat at the time, or sorry, the bomb that was discovered, and another bomb later that week inside a seat at the Times Square of Paramount had been planted months before. He absolutely had no science behind how this shit goes off. No, he didn't know when it was going to go well, off. Oh, he just put shit together and hope. He was like, "Oh, that thing? I planted that way back." So I'm probably going back way back. All right. and it bombs a little something. Now, now those two bombs that that you know 
without injury, the bomb squad found and everything else, those would actually be the last two bombs he would ever plant. The next mm. episode, we're going to cover his January 1957 arrest and the brilliant man who helped police find the Hold perfect on. profile to go off. I don't really Ooh. think this guy's brilliant anymore because it took him five years. No, no, no. no, no not him. No, no, no. We're going to get no, 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 I'm, the I'm, guy I'm, caught caught him. Him. I'm talking about the guy who caught him. This guy is an idiot. It took him five years to find a guy who's been smudging people's shoes. Well, who knows if they had him on the case for all five of those That's years, man. We're maybe maybe the end game, basically, is like, okay, he's okay, okay. He's inflicting legit harm. Let's bring in a professional. I can see this. Boom, caught. Yeah, this know? guy's like, okay, three months on the case. I know who it is. I'm going to drag it out. Yeah. This guy, no, no, this, this guy, payday. this guy payday. intellectually, the guy that we're going to cover next episode, he is the equivalent of an intellectual Batman. Look, he is it, phenomenal. No, it, it, so does like he take down lots Boondocks? of people? Yeah. It, does he like Boondocks. Dick Tracy? Does he wear a yellow Boondocks? coat? Boondock Saints? No. Mesker, compared to compared to this guy, Mesker was a great fictional character. This guy is for real, and he was the shit. He was the nice. first. He he literally wrote the book on criminal profiling. And but he's does he know who Jack the Ripper is? Fictional characters. Nobody knows who Jack the Ripper is. And that was a whole case by his time. Jack yeah, the Ripper knows. I actually never caught him, dude. Jack knows. So anyway, we're going to get into the man who helped profile and find the perfect way to track this guy down. And also the secretary who is actually very damn good at filing. This secretary, oh, this I profiler, yeah. Yeah. they saved the day. So, that's, so remember, that's when you're it. treating your secretary like trash, she knows all that's right. your issues. Yeah, well, there's a fine line between the, the whole secretary vibe. So Everybody that's knows. that's that's it. <laughs> Sex or Terry. All right, so that's it for the first episode. Um, right now, I, I'm I actually excited about the capture. I'm re- I'm really curious. I'm yeah, gonna, I, I'm right. gonna just withhold my Wikipedia urges to read up on the rest of it in the meantime. There you go. I'm gonna let you do the right. storytelling. So thing. so real quick, I'm gonna cite my sources. A lot of stuff was taken from uh, Wikipedia, but there's also a book written called Incendiary. So I mean that has umpteen million amounts of information on this case i gave you the quick outline i gave you you know the the main source and everything else but um there's so much more to this case and and following with the profile that actually did this it's, it's pretty phenomenal it's, yeah, it's very fascinating English person and stuff and a former writer and stuff you're doing your work cited and i, I, I appreciate <laughs> i'm that. trying to i'm trying to <laughs> so anyway so that so that wraps up that wraps up uh george metesky before his capture uh we covered all the bombings we, we covered what led to the bombings um, I, I, thirty I, fucking two. Thirty-two bombs. Lots that that we know of. I mean, there yeah. could be shit that still hasn't. You know, exploded. I'm not gonna lie, Mooch. I didn't expect you to keep count at all. Man, I'm pretty proud of you. Good yes. job. <laughs> so, you. real quick. Uh, first and foremost, we are a band. We do play shows, and if you happen to be listening oh, yeah, to this in Arizona, that. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you happen to be listening yeah. to this in Arizona, I want you to go ahead and go on iTunes. Um, give us five stars. You know, give us what you thought of the first episode. There's gonna be. I mean, way more to come. We're going to go for as long as we can, hopefully. Or at least three or four, I mean. That's right. On, man. I like three-star movies. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, Fuck, I've exactly. watched one-star movies and stuff, and like, but yeah, it was pretty good. The five stars will move us up the ratings. It's going to get more people hearing it. It's going to be putting people's listings more often. It's going to help out. It's going to be on... Uh, it's going to be on Apple uh, Podcasts. It's going to be on Stitcher. Um, we might even put the audio format on YouTube. We're going to open up uh, our own yeah, YouTube channel. Yeah, we should. It's going to be called uh, Centartainment, so check that out. You can email us directly at centartainment at gmail.com. You can go to facebook.com forward slash Chiron Band AZ. Um, check out that crazy music we put on. That's like, right. We are metal. Share. Also on so, Reverb Nation, too. Repeat. And Reverb Nation. That's right. Yeah, Reverb that's Nation. Right. You can hear some songs. Yeah, that's right. Hey, guys, and we got some stuff coming up for you on that Reverb So Nation. getting to that. So we our next show is November seventeenth. Truly, all right. Yeah, we're gonna be at Joe's Grotto. If you it's love a, that venue, man. Then. It's That's a Saturday actually, night. I mean, like we play Club Red so much. And yeah, I'm, I'm really digging the yeah, Grotto. Yeah, the Grotto's the shit. I love no, the Grotto, but man, the Red has been good to us too. So here's here's, so here's the first here's the first yeah. podcast offer. All right, if you're in Arizona, you're listening to this right now. I want you to go ahead and either email us or go ahead and hit up our Facebook. Like I Where said, Facebook. Email? Facebook.com forward slash Chiron Band AZ for the Facebook. Mm-hmm. The email is centartainment at gmail.com. And then you can also, uh, hopefully by this time, we'll have the YouTube page up. You can also go and leave us a comment on YouTube at uh, centartainment. Um, so the question for this episode, I want you, because I want everybody to get analy- an analytical mind state. I want you to start profiling Damn. us. Ah. So based off of our personalities you've heard today, and you've heard a lot of Mahalo. <laughs> Who's going to kill You've me? heard a lot of me. <laughs> You've heard a lot. I mean, you've heard a lot of our voices. There's four members, four instruments, four positions. I want you guys to go ahead and tell us One what position doggies. you think we play. So we have Fuego, Ooh. we have Mooch, we have Mahalo, and we have me, Chris. So you go through. If you Chris get all catcher, four correct, just yeah. so you know. So if you get <laughs> <laughs> if you get all four correct, we're gonna go ahead and give you guys two free tickets to the show. 
Dope. So Dare you can actually come tickets. out, come out, meet us, hang out, and also I it's want a you. Fun venue, man. Yeah, Joe's Grotto is really amazing, is. and it's usually There's really usually good. Usually like specials. a taco truck. Or yeah, like it's a great. Barbecue truck. Dude, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a blast. Hot dog. Be a lot of good bands there. I mean, it's gonna be a punk and a metal night. It's gonna, it's gonna be a lot the of fun. Hot trim. But out. And, and since we're a little bit of both, you know. Yeah, in we're, some we're, ways. I I I think I bring the punk influence more so than any of you guys. As we found out at the last show. You guys saw me rocking the um, fuck out. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But again, you let us Special know what guess. what position you think we have in the band. That's going to be the first question for the profiling. So go ahead and email us. Go ahead and, and everything else. Five stars. Hit us up on Stitcher. Hit us up on uh, on Apple Podcasts or iTunes Pod, whatever the hell that's. The little purple fucking Down icon. Hit that. One, um, so two. With, without further ado, uh, does anybody have any other five. notifications they want to give? No, well, obviously I can give just a little bit of information about the other stuff I do. Okay. Um, so we have the horror show, which is basically... So Six, six, a six. YouTube channel where we cover everything horror. It's basically a horror variety show right. of sorts. And so, I mean, we do film reviews. We do trailer reactions. We do tons of convention coverage. Uh, we've done everything from comedy sketches to makeup tutorials. And most notably, I do twice a week a show called Hail to Stephen King. And it's where I cover all things Psy King, El Rey, as I so can they find call it? him. Um, so if you're jumping on the YouTubes, you can do YouTube.com slash the horror show channel not the horror channel or whatever that's probably something totally different which i hey if you're into that that's fine but the horror show channel and uh yeah that's where you can check out all the videos we do two to three a day and you can still find a a decent amount of chiron chiron uh stuff on there as well we do crossing the streams where where we incorporate uh metal and 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 horror yep and so monthly monthly little spotlight although Boy, we have had so much trouble with copyright lately. There, there's one that we had to take down and we're going to have to re-upload right now because even though we abided by fair use, less than 30 seconds, we still got flagged. Wow. And it's at their discretion. They can still go after you. You can appeal. Right. It's a nasty process. It has me and Cecil like reassessing the show a little bit if we should even continue using video clips because the, the foreign band that you chose that did the... Until my dying yeah. day... Yeah, and it's okay. Yeah, they... Even after I had it down to like 10 seconds of footage, they still would not Dicks. let it go, dude. Big and time. he's okay. She's Germans not are apparent. sticklers, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's usually overseas bands that give us the most really? crap. <laughs> yeah, like American wow. bands. Like, I mean, well, well I guess gun, Gunship was nice on that particular episode, too, but I don't know. Anyway, I, I digress. Crossing the streams once a month on the horror show, and then you can also see a lyric video. Right. We did a full performance, actually, that Cecil yeah. shot with. Multiple cameras. We That's have a cool. couple full, full performances up, actually. We do. You can go to Play Where's, Nation. Yeah, one. Play, Play Nation. That's the other yeah. one. Yeah. Um, also, uh, we're going to be in and out of uh, Sound for you Entertainment. You're going to see you know, little bits and pieces of us on there, here and there. Yeah. Um, Fuego, what's what's the Facebook for your Hell to Stephen King? Uh, Facebook for, well, I mean, there is a uh, there is a Facebook group, I guess. There you go. And so yeah. it's nice for Chris to prompt that. I, I, I wasn't trying to horn myself out too incredibly here. Be but, the dirty yeah. slut we know you are. <laughs> yeah. If you, if, if you're into balls, Stephen King baby. stuff, whether you're a novice and just have seen a few movies or whether you're a deep diver, you know, on, on the path of the beam and you've read lots of books and stuff like that. A lunker, <laughs> um, if you will. Yeah, we, we discuss all things Psy King all the damn time. <laughs> and I can barely even talk with this guy <laughs> joking like this. But, uh, yeah, so the, the Facebook group has over 300 members. It's not like a huge Facebook group, but it's a, it's a very tightly knit quartet where we have a lot of passionate people who post on the daily on there and it's everything from book collections to what you're reading at the time uh various other things i mean anytime Psy King news jumps up or there's like a cool event or posts from his twitter silly things like that we're just all things you know along the path of the and you have an instagram stuff. correct where they can reach you yep yep i'm, I'm basically jaime and fuego on all social media okay. Mooch, sectors yeah. instagram i mean i'm just it's a really fast Matt grandma big. Matt the Hig at Instagram, yeah, and I am a Omega Twiz five one five zero at Instagram. Mahalo, where can they find you? The nearest bar at Ultra. All Cafe. right, there you go. So at anyway, Ultra this Cafe. wraps up. This Mixing wraps cocktails. up the first episode, guys. So this uh, is uh, Chiron signing off. So uh, as always, you know, you guys have been awesome. This has been Profiling Pain, and stay metal, mofos. Woo! Catch you on the next one.